Back in high school, in grade 10 physics class, which was fourth period, at the beginning of each class, as per my instructor's instructions, I would come into class, sign in, and then leave immediately. I would go down to the track and run laps. I would run a few laps, take about 10 to 20 minutes uh, at the be of every day at the beginning of each class, and then after I had run those laps, come back up to class and get back to work and uh, start learning, basically, f start learning about physics. The reason that I was doing this was because I was a very energetic uh, and excitable student, and I would come in with a lot of energy and enthusiasm, which was a bit overwhelming for the teacher, and which was also maybe a bit disruptive to the class. I was one of those students that was both simultaneously bored and asking too many questions. So my teacher's idea was that if he made me burn off some energy by running around for a while, then I would probably be able to focus more and be a better student in class. Now, that was the idea, but for a lot of reasons, I mean, it, it was a very bad idea. For one, uh, I was on the track team and the cross country uh, team, and I really liked running and I could run a lot of laps before getting tired. So doing a few laps probably didn't tire me out. If anything, it probably boosted my adrenaline levels and made me more energetic. And the additional attention that I got probably didn't help me be quieter in class. But more importantly, this was a lesson to me that I could miss a fair amount of physics class and still get by just fine. So it mustn't have been that important. And lastly, I was both literally and metaphorically being told to run away from science class, which made me really not like science class, right? So instead of just complaining about my own personal history, I want to tell a story that may be helpful for a lot of teachers and a lot of students out there that would have probably helped me. Now, back in the 1930s in a New York school, a little boy, uh, a little student, was taking physics, and he was also very disruptive and annoying in class. And so one day, his teacher pulled him aside and said, hey kid, uh, you're annoying and you're loud, but it's okay, I know why. It's because you're bored. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you this great big physics textbook, and you're going to take this textbook, and you're going to, every day, you're gonna go in the back of the class, and you're going to quietly go through this textbook, and do all the problems, and read it all, and once you've mastered it, and once you've gone through everything, and understand everything, and only then, then you can talk again. And that's what he did. And it worked well for the teacher, and well for the student. And that textbook was way more advanced than the rest of the course was, and it turned out that that student learned a lot about physics, and that it helped him much later in life. In fact, that student would go on to win a Nobel Prize and to really change the face of physics. That student was Richard Feynman. My point here is not that if I was given a great big physics textbook in high school that I would have gone to win a Nobel Prize. My point is that if you're a teacher or if you're a student, you have to stay challenged. So if you see someone that's being disruptive or if you're being disruptive, ask yourself, is that because you're bored? Is that because you need more intellectual stimulation? And if the answer to that is yes, then you need to go and give yourself a bigger challenge. That's all. This is not my high school, just for the record, but pretty mountains over there.